And I'm a real fan of serial compression on a vocal. It, uh, the 1176 is almost 99% of the time my favorite vocal compressor, both in tracking and mixing. Uh, occasionally it's a bit too grabby, it's a bit too aggressive, but you, most of the time it's just sort of invisible. When things compress on, a, on an 1176, they still sound loud and they still sound fat. They don't kind of choke and go away. You have to work really hard to make it sound like it's choking and smaller on an 1176. So I love how it handles most of the content. On the 1176, the attack and release settings are where I put them almost all the time, which is the slowest attack and the fastest release. And a lot of people don't know it's backwards on the 1176, that to get the slowest attack, you put that knob where on most compressors, it would mean it's the fastest attack. You put it all the way to the viewers to your left. That's the slowest attack. And the fastest release is all the way to the right. And that just sort of keeps it immediate to me. I know a lot of engineers do more like a 10 o'clock, two o'clock thing, uh, which also sounds good. But I don't, I sort of lose energy on a vocal when it's still, it's still kind of coming out of the, of the slow release and things are quieter. I want it to, to I, don't, I don't want to lose focus on the vocal. That might be a little too caffeinated for some people, but most of the time I like that. Every once in a while I'll slow down the release and speed up the attack. But I love, it's still, the 1176 is so aggressive. It just, it does a lot even at the slowest attack. There's, you know, it doesn't sound, uncompressed to me. I see my